Hello everyone, this is Sophie. Today I would like to show you how to use the supplies I presented to you in part 1 and especially face paints, sponges and glitter. If you would like to see part 1 of this series, just uh, click on the link appearing on the screen right now. I recommend using one half antibacterial sponge per color. I personally like to use a very shallow water recipient to wet my sponges. The most practical I have found is actually an empty face paint container that I simply fill up with water. Wet only the very tip of the sponge with only a couple drops of water. And then rub the sponge on the color in a circular motion until all moisture is no longer visible from the surface. Repeat as often as necessary. The more often you rub the sponge on the color pigments, the more opaque and wet the coverage will be on the skin. The other side of the sponge remains completely dry. I recommend testing the consistency on your hand because if the sponge is too wet, you will get a very blotchy and streaky coverage on the skin. Colors can be mixed right on top of a cake to create new colors. In this case, I'm going to mix a pink with a blue and I'm creating a purple. Don't be afraid to mess up the surface of your colors. And don't worry about it, I will show you how to clean it up. Using exactly the same technique, you can also use the color black or white to make a specific color lighter or darker. In this case, I'm creating a light gray by mixing white and black together. Cleaning the surface of your color pigments couldn't be easier. Just swipe a wet baby wipe over the surface and you will get it back as it was. Well, I don't want to bore you with too much color theory, but I'm sure as you remember, the complementary colors are located across from one another or opposite from one another on the color wheel. For example, red and green or blue and orange and purple and yellow. When we put these two colors next to one another, we create a very high contrast, which is sometimes what we look for. But you just need to be careful if you mix complementary colors together because what you will get is a not very flattering muddy color every single time as a result. Neighbor colors or at least the colors that are situated in the same quarter of the wheel are best to create a pleasant blending combination. For example, pink and purple or yellow and green or blue and purple or even um, red and yellow. But let's get back to the sponges. You can use the edge of the sponge and pull the color in order to delimit areas on the skin. Let me show you what I mean here on this practice head. If I want to paint a butterfly, I can use the edge of the sponge to delimit the shape of the upper wing as well as the bottom wing. I then use the curved side of the sponge in a stippling motion to cover a specific area. Just make sure you tap gently on the surface you want to cover. As long as the color applied hasn't dried completely, you can blend it with another color to create a very nice soft effect but try to apply lighter colors before darker ones if possible. Just apply both colors slightly overlapping and stipple softly in the midsection using the dry side of the sponge to achieve a soft blend. You can correct small mistakes or uh, change the shapes uh, slightly with a wet wipe. Just uh, stick your finger inside of a wet wipe and pull it along the surface you want to modify. Large split cakes are very popular. That's why I want to show you how to 
apply them using sponges. As I said in my previous video, um, I'm using high density sponges with the large split cakes. Just remember, children have very small faces, even uh, smaller than my practice head here. And as you can see, the sponge is coming almost all the way to the airline. That's why I always prefer to cut them a little bit on uh, each side. I first cut across the sharp edge and then I continue snipping around that edge um, to achieve um, a round shape as much as possible. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, all you want to do is try to make the sponge a little bit smaller and round it so that you don't have any sharp edges anymore. Just continue trimming your sponge until you're happy with the result and obviously do the same thing on the other side. To wet my split cakes, I use a small spray bottle. Um, basically what I do is I spray um, three or four times over the surface of the color, but not too often because this is what happens if you get it too wet. It happens to me sometimes you would get like a pool of water sitting on the surface of your split cake and you won't be able to achieve any good results with that. So what you need to do is get rid of the excess water and then just use a wet wipe to clean the surface and get it back as it was. So once I've sprayed the split cake, I also spray the sponge also two or three times and I lay the sponge very flat on the surface of the colors and I rub it back and forth maybe five, six times until all the colors are transferred onto the sponge. I then apply uh, the sponge, which has the perfect size for the face now, um, very flat on the skin and I start stippling um, while at the same time sort of twisting my wrist in the direction I want to apply the color. And uh, just a little tip for those of you who are using or considering using a practice head and you're having trouble getting it really clean with soap and water, uh, just use nail polish remover. It works really well. In the first uh, video of the series, I uh, showed you these uh, PUFA bottles um, and these are really great to apply glitter on large areas of the skin, like for example, um, butterfly wings. But if you would like to apply glitter on a smaller area, you can use your finger just make sure it is very clean and slightly wet. I usually rub my finger uh, into a wet wipe, then dip it directly into loose glitter and press it gently on the area you want to cover. Now let's imagine you have made the small design and you want to apply glitter only on the leaves. Um, in this case, um, your finger would be just uh, too big and I recommend using um, a small round brush. Just wet your brush, tap the excess water because you don't want it to be dripping and then dip the brush completely in loose glitter and then just press the glitter onto the area you want to apply it to. Because I didn't want this video to get too long, I am showing you how to use the different types of brushes in the third installment of this series. I hope that you will find it interesting. In any case, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye!